I'm Bob Delaney, and this is the NFL Game of the Week. Last week was playoff week. There was one game that was to stand above the rest as a memorable three and a half hours of football. The game took place in this stadium, where Kansas City and Miami would record the longest game ever played. The Chiefs and the Dolphins were to demonstrate perhaps more than ever before why the game is called football. Jan Stenerud's towering kickoffs were a weapon in themselves, preventing any return on almost every one of them. From the outset, the Dolphins would try to run on Kansas City's defense, number two in the AFC against the run. And throughout the first half, the Dolphins tandem of Jim Kick and Larry Zonka would be unable to do so. In fact, the Chiefs dominated the first quarter both on defense and on offense. The Chiefs moved well early in the game with Dawson setbacks, number 14, Ed Potalak, and number 38, Wendell Hayes, having more success than Miami's touted duo. With Miami's defense more wary of the Chiefs' passing, their running worked well and produced an early field goal. Then on the Dolphins' second series, Greasy sprung Paul Warfield for his first catch and the Dolphins' first first down. Greasy would try to mix his targets, however, especially trying to clear his tight end over the middle. He tried this and failed, as middle linebacker Willie Lanier was in perfect zone coverage, intercepted and caused one of the few turnovers Miami has suffered all year. An isolated view of Greasy on the last play showed that he saw his mistake immediately and came over to help on the tackle. Though he was not needed on the tackle, Greasy was playing with a sore shoulder and it was a tribute to his courage that he tried. So the Chiefs had the first takeaway of the game and Dawson took advantage. From the Dolphins' 30, he moved goalward with his runners, then tried to hit Otis Taylor for the score. But the Dolphins' secondary defense Taylor well, one of the keys to the game. Taylor would make but three catches all day, and none of them game-breakers. Instead, Hank Stram's strategy would be to have Dawson rely heavily on his setbacks, and in particular, Ed Podolak. And it was Podolak who scored the touchdown. Repeating the score, we can see Dawson look the defense one way and go the other, where he had Podolak, a number 76 guard Mo Mormon, ready to stamp out any would-be tacklers. The chief strategy of ignoring the obvious in Taylor, using him as a decoy, and instead springing the quick Podolak wide on screens and sweeps, had worked well, and Kansas City led 10 to nothing. Conversely, Miami's only offense so far had been the obvious, Greasy to Warfield. Number 42 is a magician in cleats and took the Dolphins into Kansas City territory on the last play of the first quarter. The Chiefs were stifling Miami's running and Greasy really had no choice but to continue to pass. He was receiving good protection and this, plus his ability to roll out of pressure and throw accurately on the run, is one of the reasons the Dolphins got to the playoffs. His receivers are always conscious of this and work well with Greasy on a busted play, as number 80 tight end Marv Fleming did here. Three plays later, the Dolphins' Larry Zonka snuck over for Miami's first score. It was now 10-7 Chiefs. Dawson kept getting the big play from Ed Podolak, 
who had his greatest pro game last Saturday. The Chiefs' downfield blocking for Podolak was superb, and Podolak again sparked the Chiefs into Dolphin territory. Dawson's faking was superb too. On the next play, he fooled almost everyone with three backfield fakes. However, he failed to fool Curtis Johnson, number 45, who stayed right with Otis Taylor and halted the drive with an interception. But the Dolphins failed to move with the interception and the Chiefs got the ball back on a punt. It was Podolak again, using his deceptive speed to outrun the Dolphins line and linebackers. 32 yards to the Dolphin 29. This was to be one of the key series in the game, for although Podolak had taken them deep, the Chiefs came up empty. The Dolphins stopped them on three downs, and Jan Stenerud missed a 30-yard field goal. Stenerud had just been selected to the Pro Bowl over the Dolphins' Garo Yepremian, but the Norwegian ex-ski jumper had not had a particularly good year, and had missed many medium-range attempts this year that were sure things for him in the past. None was more important than the one he missed here. So the Dolphins took over with under four minutes left in the half. And although Greasy had some success with short flips to his setbacks, the Dolphins could not reach midfield. Aside from the one touchdown drive, Miami could not figure out the Chiefs' defense, which was keying on Miami's runners, and for the most part, pressuring and containing Greasy. The Chiefs took over with a minute and a half left in the half. It was here that Ed Podolak, who had played so well throughout the game, made his only mistake. Trying merely to run out the halftime clock, Podolak lost the ball, Dick Anderson recovered, and the Dolphins would have the last shot before the half. Miami's defense is sometimes overlooked, but they had produced two takeaways in the half. Greasy failed to capitalize on Johnson's earlier interception, and now he failed to score on Anderson's recovery. But Yepremian did kick a field goal here to salvage three, and the teams went into the locker room tied 10-10 at the half. In the third quarter, the Chiefs galloped downfield again on a long, time-consuming drive of the type Dawson used to beat Oakland to gain the playoffs. Stram decided to let Dawson use his wide receivers more in the second half on medium-range passes in front of Miami's zone. And two of the key plays in the drive were passes to number 17, Elmo Wright, and to Otis Taylor, who lateral to Podolak. penalty on this play reduced the gain, but on the next play, Podolak ripped through a gaping hole up the middle. Stram had inserted the third in his big back arsenal, Jim Otis, and number 35 made a key first down on third and two from the Dolphin 13, bouncing off his own blocker and moving to the one. Two plays later, Otis went up and over, and the 16-play, 10-minute drive had put the Chiefs ahead 17 to 10. But the next four minutes saw the Dolphins do quickly what the Chiefs had taken almost a whole quarter to do. Thus began one of the great ironies of the game, the ability of Greasy and Miami to strike back swiftly. First, Greasy hit number 81, Howard Twilly. Then it was Warfield in the quick post between Jim Kearney and Emmett Thomas to the Chiefs' seven. Two plays later, on third and goal from the one, Jim Kick went over, and Upremian's extra point tied the score at 17 at the end of the third quarter. The game was dead even, both on the board and on the field. It would remain so for a long time to come. On the first play of the fourth quarter, Nick Bonacanti recovered a fumble in chief territory, and the Dolphins picked up where they left off in the third period by moving the football. The big play was made by Bob Greasy with third and eight on his opponent's 29.
The cool-headed quarterback with the aching left shoulder was brought down hard on his opponent's 17. Greasy was playing on courage, for few people know how much his shoulder injury has bothered him. Notice how limp his left arm appears. It's almost completely immobile. And though it's not his passing arm, the disability definitely hampered him in the last three games of the season, two of which Miami lost. One play after his run, Greasy passed right into the arms of linebacker Jim Lynch. Miami's first series of the new quarter, like Kansas City's, had ended in a turnover. The Chiefs had a break, the ball on their own nine, and quickly moved out on two short runs, and Dawson's pass to tight end Willie Frazier, playing in place of Morris Stroud. The Chiefs' short game had drawn the Miami defense in tight. So here, from his own 34, Len Dawson threw the long ball. It's doubtful that Elmo Wright really thought he'd scored. More likely, the rookie wanted a chance to show off his victory dance to a national television audience. Another look at this big 63-yard play in super slow motion should dispel the notion once and for all that Len Dawson's 36-year-old arm isn't strong enough to throw the bomb. On the next play, behind beautiful blocking, Ed Podolak powered past safety Dick Anderson into the end zone for the touchdown that put his team in front, 24-17. There was just seven minutes left in the game now, but it was enough time for Bob Greasy to put on a furious display of pinpoint passing that brought Miami right back in the game. First after rolling right, Greasy turned and threw across the field for his tight end, Marv Fleming, on a play that produced 13 yards and a first down on the Miami 42. Here, Greasy sprung the reverse to Warfield, but the flanker fumbled. Luckily, Bob DeMarco recovered and Miami retained possession. Third and 13, and Greasy went to his ace, Warfield, who had beaten Emmett Thomas over the middle. The Dolphins had the first down they so desperately needed. From here, Greasy simply peppered the Kansas City secondary with a succession of short, accurate passes. First to Jim Mandich at the right sideline, then a perfectly lofted pass to Warfield, who took it all the way to the Chief 12. On this key pass, Warfield was operating on the short side of the field with little room to maneuver. Yet his moves completely fooled Emmett Thomas, number 18, who could only leap in a futile gesture at the pass over his head. Now from the 12, Greasy continued his aerial onslaught with a rollout bullet to Howard Twilley at the five-yard line. Miami called timeout. There was now only a minute and a half remaining in the game. Here on his opponent's five, with no time left for mistakes, Bob Greasy vividly demonstrated why in this, his fifth NFL season, he has become the complete pro quarterback. Greasy's primary receiver was blanketed in the end zone, so he improvised. Rolling to his right, he spotted a secondary outlet in Marv Fleming and hit him for the touchdown. Dolphins had again spotted the Chiefs a touchdown, then marched the length of the field to tie them. But unbelievably, even with a little over a minute left, this game was far from over. The reason again was Ed Podolak, 
the third year back from Iowa, took the kickoff and burned 78 yards through the Dolphins before being pushed out of bounds by Curtis Johnson. It was fitting that the all-purpose Podolak made the big play, for his consistency and variety of talents are a major reason why the Chiefs won the Western Division for the first time since 1966. Now Kansas City had the ball on the Miami 22 and elected to lifelessly run three consecutive times. It ensured keeping the ball for the almost certain field goal that would win the game. The strategy also served to run the clock down, despite the fact that Miami called time immediately after each play. So the stage was set for Jan Stenerud, possibly the premier kicker in the game, to kick the winning field goal from the 32-yard line, with only 35 seconds left. It seemed like a sure thing, but it wasn't. Incredibly, Stenerud had missed the chip shot, and Miami took over with the game still deadlocked at 24 points. Surprisingly, the Dolphins failed to even run up the remaining 35 seconds and were forced to punt with seven seconds left. Time expired by the time Dennis Holman made a fair catch. But here, Hank Stram decided to forego the attempt of a free kick, which would have had to travel 70 yards and could have been returned by Miami. The game now went into overtime. The crucial coin toss was won by Kansas City. Remember, in sudden death overtime, the first team to score in any way wins, so the Chiefs had a decided advantage already. Garo Yepremian kicked off, purposely keeping the ball low and away from Ed Podolak. But he ended up with it anyway, and again made a fine return, giving his team excellent field position on their own 46. Already, the Chiefs were close to Stenerud's field goal range, and they quickly improved their position on the first play when workhorse Podolak took a screen into Miami territory. Len Dawson, who had called a fine game today, stayed with Podolak and was rewarded with even better field position. But Dawson may have gone to the well once too often, for on the next play, Podolak fumbled, and though Miami gestured madly, Kansas City recovered the ball on the Dolphin 35. Stenerud came in to kick. The game appeared lost for Miami. But Nick Bonacanti blocked the kick, and the Dolphins again had a new life after teetering on the brink of defeat. On this series, Miami's first in overtime, the chief defense seemed to vent their frustration on the Dolphins. Aaron Brown crashed into Greasy's sore shoulder, and the young quarterback obviously felt the pain. This was a great day for the AFC's number one and number two passers, both former Purdue quarterbacks, although a decade apart. Today, both were magnificent. Again, the Chiefs smelled out the flanker reverse, Marvin Upshaw tripping up Warfield for a loss that ended Miami's first overtime series. But their defense held the Chiefs and forced a punt to Jake Scott, the second leading returner in the AFC. And Scott's 18-yard dash gave Miami decent field position, which is so important in sudden death. Miami picked up additional yardage and a first down when Greasy fired to Twilly at the right sideline. But their next two plays got nowhere against the Chiefs defense. Watch Marvin Upshaw, number 81, shrug off a block by Larry Little. Larry Zonka was the victim. The huge fullback had been held in check so far today. Now faced with third and nine, Greasy went for Warfield, who this time was well covered by Emmett Thomas. Warfield caught seven passes today, most of them on Thomas. But here, with Miami driving, the cornerback came up with a vital save. A repeat in slow motion shows how he did it.
Thomas's heroics made it fourth down and forced Miami to try a field goal from the 52. Ypremian's attempt was short and Kansas City had the ball again. From his own 20, cool Lenny Dawson faked to Podolak and pitched to Elmo Wright, who made his second big catch of the day. Miami was giving special coverage to Otis Taylor, and though he would catch three passes today, his total yardage was merely 12. Here, faced with extinction again, the Miami defense got tough. Ed Podolak was brought down for a loss by Nick Bonacanti, one of 20 tackles or assists made today by the Dolphin captain. Now faced with third and five at midfield, Dawson tried for better position for his kicker and lost. Jake Scott fielded the ball and returned 13 yards to the Miami 46 to end one threat and set up a new one for his own team as the game went into the second period of overtime. But even this break didn't help Miami, as on third down, Greasy scrambled away from intense pressure, ran right up to the scrimmage line, and let fly with everything he had. Jim Mandich had safety Jim Kearney beaten, but the pass was on the wrong side and fell incomplete. Another opportunity had been missed by Miami, but their defense again stopped the Chiefs and Greasy had the ball on his own 35. He called for Zonka on a counter against the flow and the big back finally broke loose. This play, one of the biggest of many in this thriller, finally brought Miami into good field position, and Garo Yepremian came in to make the most important kick of the 1971 NFL season. It was good. Another look shows Yepremian knew it was good as soon as he kicked it. His holder, Carl Noonan, waited for the signal before celebrating one of the most exciting victories a team has ever won. In the longest professional football game ever played, a field goal had propelled the Miami Dolphins into the championship game. In only the fourth sudden death overtime in the league's history, the Kansas City Chiefs' dream of a third Super Bowl was ended. While Don Shula's young team had kicked and scratched and came from behind to prove that they're a team that has arrived.